hello hello good morning can you guys hear me I think we're live now are we looks like we are all right cool I think I have this uh, some people already joining in welcome guys hey mr. Manson good to have you here hey Frank great what time is it there um, it's about nine o'clock a.m. on the 17 on the 17 yeah so pretty early well not really but <laughs> early enough great uh, thanks Winston thanks for letting me know um, yeah so uh, today is a bit different as in as a different day just because uh, Pixelogic is going to be streaming from Comic Con this I think it's Friday and Thursday for you guys I'm, I'm not entirely sure you can check uh, the details um, hey Luciano how's it going and and yeah so instead of you know doubling up or anything like that um, I just spoke with Kyle and and I moved my Friday stream to today and that's why that's why we're doing this today uh, but it's gonna be a pretty chill one uh, I have a few things to show you kind of like the the result of a couple of uh, stream sessions or not sessions yeah like little if you want to group them into separate like playlists or something there will be like uh, different projects that I've been working throughout uh, a few streams so I'm gonna show you the the final result of all that um, but yeah so today is gonna be pretty chill I'm just gonna be uh, you know doing a new concept sculpting pretty much sculpting I don't have a, a lot of a uh, tips and tricks I, I'm sure I'll come up with something throughout the process but yeah it's gonna be pretty chill so if you have any questions about anything just feel free to ask as I go through the through the motions and um, just check the chat here uh, I, I think there's some there's still some some mismatch between what I can see in the chat and what appears on screen so if you see a, a question that I don't answer, maybe someone else that I do know, I can see in the chat will let me know. We'll see. Hey Neil, how are you going? Uh, Dr. Pixel, Pixel Aruba. Hi, how are you? I'm talking from past. I'm still on the 16, 7 p.m. Uh, that's fair enough. Uh, most people will be in the past, um, unless you're in this, this side of the world. Um, yeah, so all right, let me just go ahead and show you a couple of things that I wanted to showcase. Um, let me see if you can see that screen. Yep. Cool. So this is the alien gun that we've been working for uh, three streams, for the past three streams. I just went ahead and finished it up. Let me just push it here so you can guys, you guys see see a little bit better. So yeah, it's um it's a, a zebrafish concept. It's not super polished or anything, uh, but like I said from the very beginning, the idea was just to to come up with a concept and and being able to present something that that looks interesting, that has the details that you want to to showcase and all that. Uh, so I went ahead and I took that and I pushed that into Keyshot using the zebrafish to Keyshot bridge. And yeah, I signed a, a few different materials and and some labels that uh, it's a it's a very interesting pack of uh, decal labels that I bought from. Um, uh, sorry, I forgot the name. It's a it's a hard name to pronounce for me, but it's uh, I will share it later on. Um, and I also shared it in the social media when I when I posted this image. But yeah, it's it's a guy that does uh, really cool decals and and images. So I just you know. Um, now that I see it, uh, it might be a little bit. <laughs> um, I, I, I might I might have been a, a little bit overkill with the with all the the details, but you know, it's just a concept anyway. Uh, so what what I wanted to show you from the very beginning is that it's just a concept, and uh, you don't have to make it absolutely perfect in order to showcase something. So let's say that if I take this one all the way to this polished state, because uh, at the end of the day it's just a uh, you know, it's a Polish image that you can put in your portfolio. Uh, but once you take that and you present it to your art director, or or if you don't have an art director, if you're just happy with it and you want to polish it a little bit better and put it into a game engine, whatever it is, you at least have something that you know it works and you're happy with it. Uh, so you can just go ahead and do a retopology and project all those details 
and then just do all the UV mapping and, and, and the rest of the process. But um, yeah, what I, what I wanted really to show you is that you know you can you can get to a very polished level from you know a, a relatively a relatively sketchy um, process or a very sketchy um, so, uh, sculpture. Um, this looks like District Nine gun. It might, it might, it might. Um, I mean, like I'm not, I'm not a a very experienced hard surface modeler. Like I don't have all the tricks that all those awesome hard model, uh, hard surface, hard surface model modelers have. Um, but, but yeah, there you go. So this is the the final one. Um, obviously, in in this Pixelogic stream, we only got to the point where. I have pretty much the the concept sculpt ready, all the details and everything, uh, but all the rest of the you know assigning materials, putting all these labels and and the rendering in Keyshot, that's uh, that's obviously outside of the the scope of the Pixelogic stream. However, um, what I'll do is I just did a quick sketch yesterday. Uh, so this is a a really silly sci-fi box, <laughs> but it has pretty much the same concept and the same process that I showed you throughout the previous streams. Uh, so what I did in this one was just, I'm going to record it, I haven't done it, but I will record a, a little, uh, a quick guide for the Seabrush guides. So I'm gonna list all the, the streams that we did for the gun. And then for that last bit where I obviously didn't show all the assigned materials and rendering and things like that in Keyshot, I'm gonna do that in the Seabrush guides website. So once it's ready, I'll, I'll share it. So you can follow along for the creation of the gun and then for the final bit where it's going to be just the render and, and texture and, and all that, um, you can have a look at this guide with ha which, you know, it has exactly the same thing. I use even very similar um, decals and all that, but there you go. So that is uh, that is coming up. So keep an eye on that. And hopefully it's gonna be ready this or the, or the following week is just gonna be uh, a quick guide to to finish up what we started with this gun, <laughs> essentially, that's what it is. Um, all right, so, Lula District died. Hey, Rod, how's he going? Jose Lara, hey, man, how's he going? Um, I bought your extra mile. Yeah, I saw you there, so Jose Lara is talking about the extra mile course. I'll I'll, I'll briefly mention that in, in, in just a second. Um, so glad to have you on board. It's it's gonna be really fun, and I think the the, the community that is being formed around it is uh, is absolutely fantastic. So um, I'm I'm really glad that you're having fun with it. All right, let's go ahead and I'll show you the other project that I that I wanted to show, which is this guy. If you remember, this is the project that we kind of finished um, to this state. So around there, so you can see it. Right. So this little guy. Uh, we worked on these for two, no, for four streams actually. It took it took a while, but um, there there were like some fun streams as well. So you can watch the entire process of this guy. And some of you guys, I can I can recognize you from from those streams. Um, like you know, I've seen you before, so I know I know I know that you know what I'm talking about. So this guy was uh, done through our four streams. Uh, we started with this. You know, very rough thumbnail uh, where we do uh, where we did uh, some feature mapping to figure out what features in Zbrush we were gonna use. Then we did this little silly sketch just to have a a better idea of what we're going to do because this one was very very sketchy. I mean, this is still <laughs> this is still pretty rough, but um, it at least gives us a, a more you know this a, a better a better understanding of what we should aim for. Um, other than that. Uh, there's, this is some some of the renders that we did and of the process, uh, some of the details for the for the mask and, and things like that. Uh, but yeah, so we we kind of like finished with this. And uh, yesterday as well, I had some time uh, because again, I've been working on the on the the extra mile course that that Jose um, mentioned for the past year. <laughs> it's been a long time, um, and since the release a few days ago I've I've had a lot of time now well not a lot of time but a few a few more hours to spare to to take one of these um old or, or the projects that I finished beforehand and finished it up so here is the the final result so this little guy just want to make sure that you guys can see it so I took this one um went through the process of unwrapping it really quickly using the UV master nothing too too complicated and sent it to substance painter 
and then marmos it and here we go so this is a, a real time render actual so actually so it's it's pretty cool um i mean it's pretty cool to be able to to rotate it and, and take different screenshots so this is just a screenshot from from marmos it and it's pretty um pretty cool how how that works um so again what what jose lara mentioned about the the extra mile he well the, this this guy you could say is is using kind of like the same process so once you have the this culture ready uh, in that extra mile course as well. I'll take you through the entire process of you know texturing, substance painter, uh, prototyping, doing marmoset renders, key shot as well, and and so on and so forth. So um, I'm quite happy with the with the result. It's just another you know um, another one of those tick boxes that you can you can add to your portfolio. Since um, I have a a, a a very big library of projects that I don't get to finish, <laughs> so I'm I'm happy to at least just get this character to this polished state where I can say, all right, yeah, let's take some, some screenshots and, and put it into the um, portfolio. Um, I did have some fun with, I don't know if you can see it there, but I was just trying some some new techniques with Substance Painter to generate this this fur, and I think it came out all right. Um, I'll, I'll see if I can share some of that as well. But yeah, so I just wanted to show you that we did <laughs> finish some of these projects. I just didn't leave it up there um, in the in the in the backup files. Um, let me see, Mr. Manson, uh, Sergio. Hey, Sergio, how's it going? Saludos desde Colombia. Another fellow Colombian. Oh, by the way, I got my my citizenship the other day, the Australian citizenship. So now I I am as much Colombian as I am Australian, I guess. <laughs> so that's exciting. Another exciting news. Uh, would you be able to achieve the same result in your GON project using Substance Painter instead of Keyshot? Um, yes, yes, absolutely. It's just a different process, really. So in Substance Painter, you need um, UVs, or you can use the the technique that I that I showed in the. I'm, I'm sure you've seen it. The second video in the masterclass series where I show you how to use Substance Painter without UVs. Um, but Anyway, let's let's get, let's go ahead and start because it's been about like 20 minutes of of me chatting around. Oh, uh, one more thing. <laughs> let me let me see. All right, so this is the the course that Jose Lara is is talking about. Uh, it's a it's it's again it's a pretty pretty intense course. I seen it's a it's a very large course. Um, so it's the step-by-step -step system to turn your zebra sculpture into a polish illustration for concept and character artists. So if you go to the 3D concept I don't know why I have that extra URL there. I'll check check it out in this. And yeah, so if you go in here, um, you can just read more about it. Here's what the whole extra mile is. Um, so the course is called the extra mile, and it's just to help you go that extra mile. That's the whole point. And it's a lifetime access, so you you get access to everything. If for life and my idea with this because it's such a big project um, I call it like my biggest project since the ZBrush guides so because it's such a big project I will uh, try to keep it updated and I'm very involved so there's gonna be like Q&A sessions and um, kind of like live streams but dedicated to different parts of the process uh, later on so it's pretty pretty cool and yeah so you here you can see all the modules so I'll take you from you know from the very basic fundamental essential concepts and, and busting myths. So we'll talk about character design, uh, lighting principles, things like that, then moving into the, the sculpting uh, module. So this is a, a whole module just dedicated to take you from an, an idea to you know HD polish, like super um, refined sculpture. And from there, we take I'll take you into uh, an introduction to rendering, and I'm showing you uh, a few things from BPR, from ZBrush, Keyshot, et cetera, et cetera. And then we have a texturing process. So we do prototyping, poly paint, and, and render passes in ZBrush. So this is kind of like a ZBrush centric, this one as well. Uh, then we have UVs, UV maps, advanced texturing with Substance Painter. So this module six is all about Substance Painting, uh, Substance Painter, uh, which is really, really fun. Um, it's, it's definitely one of my favorite tools to, to texture nowadays. Then we go into advanced rendering, and I'll just show you some some Kishan techniques, uh, the real-time marmoset render, and and so on and so forth. And finally, we go into composi composition, and we talk about how to present your render and how to make it like super appealing, and yeah, basically go that extra mile. So there you have it. And uh, the this this course, the enrollment for this course closes tomorrow. For me, it will be tomorrow. 
hang on, for, for you guys, uh, for most of you guys that aren't on the 16, it closes on the 17 at midnight, so tomorrow at midnight. And if you get in uh, this, first, this first time, uh, you'll get access to these extra modules, which are pretty cool. Uh, living as an artist, or the art of a living as an artist, and this is where I, I walk you through uh, my experience of what it's been to live as an artist and time management and all those sort of things, plus some pretty cool inter interviews with uh, great artists from the industry. Uh, actually, one of them, I think he started to, to do live streams recently in, in Pixelogic channel, uh, Miguel Guerrero, who's awesome. So I, I interviewed him as well. So you'll, you'll get that as well. And, you know, uh, this one is I, by far, I think, the, the most important part of the course because the community that's been forming around has been, has been fantastic. And, yeah, that's it. <laughs> uh, the, the third one is just a portfolio review feedback, which is going to be a one-on-one -on -one with me. And we sit down and, you know, online, we sit down and, and, and have a look at your portfolio, what you want to achieve, and so on and so forth. And, yeah, if you have any questions, uh, here's a set of, Q&A, uh, but yeah, that that's pretty much it. Let's let's get that um, shameless plug of the course out of the way. Uh, but I, I did wanted to let you guys know in case you haven't been aware uh, with a series of emails that I've been bombarding you with. Um, it's just such a cool thing, I think. Um, not only just because it is a course, but I think the the community that is forming around is such a cool thing that I don't want you guys to miss that um, and if you cannot do it in this time I will open it later on it's just that some of the the little perks and and cool things that you get with this first VIP release might not be there in the future all right cool so let me just show you what I'm going to be doing today like I said it's gonna be pretty chill I got this um, Japanese makaki makaki or makaki um, references I just went ahead and, and googled them so I'm gonna do like a stylized version of these and this I think is gonna help us you know, do some um, fiber mesh, interesting fiber mesh, uh, cool things with the with the hair, the eyes. I don't know, maybe maybe we can give it a try, give it a go, and see if we can get some some wet um, fiber mesh. I've never tried it, but it might be something interesting to to try to achieve. So this is what I'm going to be doing. Probably just the bust, just the head, and um, and it's going to be a stylized version. And yeah, so I have some references here. Um, obviously, different ages and I think these macaques these primates are, are really really fun um, and, I, and these like these are very intelligent creatures as well okay so I'm gonna put that on the on my right hand side monitor and I'm gonna find a good one just to to have as a reference oh, by the way so um, I think I'm gonna use this one as my first sort of like the sketching well, this one and, and these three, really, as my first sketching reference, uh, just because of the shape. If you see, this is kind of like, um, uh, let's go ahead and bring in that one. So this is gonna be kind of like a square almost, like that. And this is the same thing for that. So that's, this is how I'm thinking in terms of very simple shapes to, to sketch it. And then we can go ahead and do the same thing for this part of the of the face, and because I'm gonna try to get a, a very stylized version of this this um, design, oh, I'm gonna try to design it very stylized. Uh, I'm gonna try to go for very geometric shapes, and then once I have these blocked out uh, or blocked in, we can go ahead and do, you know, maybe like a cylinder for this part. Not a cylinder, a, a sphere, right? And obviously a cylinder for the eyes. Uh, sorry, a, a sphere for the eyes, and maybe another one for for the head. So I just kind of like decompose these into the most basic shapes, um, the very primary shapes. So um, for Jose Lara, <laughs> who's already in the course, you you know what I'm talking about in the in the second module. Um, hey Paulo, you were using the software Krita. Is a free software, free, Krita. Um, yeah, so Krita is so it's, it's a spell Krita, like this, with a K. Um, I think that's the one that you're referring to. That's a, a free software for, for sketching and illustration. It's Yeah, it's called Krita, and it's really, really good if you want to give it a go. 
Cool, so at least now you know which ones I will be using as a reference. Let's go ahead and start with ZBrush. So 25 minutes in, <laughs> we're going to finally get into ZBrush. All right, so I have a, a simple sphere here. I'm going to go ahead and click on Dynamesh just to enable it and probably just reduce. Actually, let's just reduce the size of the sphere. Uh, remember that reducing the size of the sphere is almost the same as uh, changing the resolution and just running Dynamesh again because Dynamesh resolution is directly related to the size of the mesh. So if you just reduce the mesh and then run Dynamesh again, the the resolution is going to change, right? All right, so that's that's about it. Let's go ahead and I'm going to leave this one as, as my starting point, and I'm going to go ahead and append the primitives or the geometric shapes that I mentioned that I was going to use. So let's go ahead and append a cube. All right, I'm going to dynamize that as well. And I'm going to enable symmetry. So I'm going to use the sphere kind of as, a, as, the, as the head of the character. And I'm going to use this uh, rectangular shape just to, do, to block, on, block in the, the eyes. Or that sort of like that uh, front part of the top part of the head. Actually, I'm going to scale this up a bit more. And something we can do is flatten this area so that we can see more of that rectangular shape. So I'm going to go for flatten. So something there. That seems, that looks all right. And I'm going to take this one. I'm going to duplicate that, bring in the gizmo, turn off symmetry so that I can rotate it. Like so, maybe scale it up a bit and push it down. So maybe let's do the same thing with the, I'm going to append a, oops, not that one, um, append a sphere and let's finish up the blocking really quickly. Right. I think something like that would be fine. I will refine the proportions in just a second, but uh, to give you an idea, again, to, to try to maintain this, this reference here. So we have this first kind of like original shape for the head and the mouth. Then we have this for the eyes and this part for the you know the connection and, and the nose. So the nose will be around there. Well, not there. Maybe the nose will be around here and the eyes. <laughs> right? So um, yeah, so that's the, the block, the, the very basic block out. So now let's go ahead and, and fine tune this a little bit. So I'm going to take that one, uh, this cylinder, and I'm going to rotate it a little bit so that we can get these kind of like angle part of the of the face, angular part of the face. I think I think that looks all right. I'm going to go ahead and click on the cog icon and use the taper deformer so that it's not, you know, a perfect rectangular shape. Okay. Accept. There we go. And probably this one as well. I'm going to rotate it so that the the, the bridge and the bridge of the nose and the arc um, of of the eyes, the sigmatic arc and all that, they're a little bit more pronounced. Right? So you can already see a little bit of, uh, hopefully you can see a little bit of what I'm trying to do here. And uh, let's go ahead and do, um, maybe this, maybe the, the sphere as well. I can just push it forward a bit more. Um, and, and the way that I'm seeing it is like this edge of this rectangular shape is going to be like the top lip. So when we start like sculpting and doing that, that part of the, the process, that's going to become the, the upper lip. All right. Um, other than that, we can, again, this is just the head. We'll do the, the body separately. 
Um, let's see what else we can we can do. Oh, let's take that one, the the top part or the top cylinder um, rectangular shape. <laughs> I keep confusing the 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 geometric shapes. Let's. Um, I'm gonna use the soft deformer. This is something that um, probably I haven't used much in these streams, but I use it all the time, and it's I think it's one of the best deformers here in ZBrush because it allows you. It's like creating a, a lattice around the object or the volume of the object, and it allows you to you work really quickly and deform shapes very very nicely. So I'm gonna hold Control, click and drag just to clear out the mask or mask everything, and then I'm gonna mask out oops everything but these points invert that selection whoops invert that mask so only I'm only affecting these these points of the lattice and I'm gonna click and drag just to give it a bit more shape yeah that looks alright accept that and maybe scale it down a bit All right, so I think if I want to push the style of this a little bit further, I'm going to I'm going to push this down a bit more. So what I want to do is bring in the Gizmo 3D, and I'm going to click on this uh, what Joseph Dross calls the pizza icon. So I'm going to click on that, and that way I can move the entire set of subtools. But I only want to move the bottom part. So I'm going to hold Control and Shift to select these areas. And you'll see just by hold, holding Control and Shift to to click over or, or drag over a a subtool, uh, Zbrush is going to give you these kind of like hatch lines, and that means that these won't move except these ones. So now I can go ahead and push this down like so, and in fact I can hold Alt to just reposition the gizmo. I'm gonna also rotate it a little bit and scale it a bit more. Alright, so that, I think in terms of proportion, it looks a little bit better. Cool. Do a quick save. Let's see if you guys have any questions and have a sip of water. Also known as the FFD 3x3 in 3D Max. Not sure which which one you're talking about. Maybe the the deformer. Um, I think these these uh, Japanese macaques are also called uh, Zuru. Nihon Zuru. Um, I think I think the name um, Zuru. If I, I'm I'm co probably are completely off here, but I think Zuru or Saru Zuru or Saru. It's um, monkey in Japanese and Nihon Saru or Nihon Zuru is a uh, Japanese monkey. Anyway, <laughs> that doesn't matter. Um, all right, let's go ahead and do the eyes. So for the eyes, what I want to do is, I want to do it separately, and I want to uh, do a, a bit of poly paint and have it ready from the very beginning, because from the references that I have here, you'll see the eyes are probably the most expressive thing. Well, n not only in this macaque, just in, in general, um, in any you know, character really, the eyes are absolutely expressive. So if I get this right from the very beginning, then the rest kind of like falls into part really nicely, or fall into place really nicely. So let's um, let's do that first. Uh, we have these in a, in a separate tool. I'm gonna go ahead and click on a sphere, a sphere 3D here. And I'm gonna click make polymesh 3D, bring in the gizmo. And I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees, holding shift, right, so that we have this type of distribution, which is, um, which is good. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and change to the skin material, right. Uh, I'm going to also go ahead and divide this a few times. So I have 520,000 points. And that should be good. Uh, let's go ahead and also do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna change. I'm gonna create a um, a painting brush. So selecting the standard brush, and I'm gonna clone that. 
so that I don't mess with the original. So you'll see there is a a number one next to the brush. That means it's a it's the same brush, it's just a clone of it. And what I want to do is turn on symmetry, and I'm going to turn on radial symmetry. And for you guys, that should be on the transform palette around there. Uh, I'm also going to change the radial count to let's start with 32, something big. And you'll see the I get all these instances of the brush. Uh, but I'm, now I'm interested in not the x-axis, but the z-axis, I think. There we go. All right, so that this is going to allow us to paint this eye really quickly. And what I want to do, I'm looking at my references here. I'm going to start with a very dull yellowish color, kind of like for the, the sclera of the eye. And also, I am going to forgot to actually tweak the standard brush. So I'm going to turn Z add off and enable RGB. And in the standard, um, in the standard UI, if you're using that, it should be at the top, obviously. I'm going to increase my brush size, and I'm just going to start painting. So you'll see with the with the radial symmetry is really, really easy and really quick to do this type of thing. All right, and let's go ahead and do the same thing, but with a red color, kind of like blood for all the blood vessels here at the back. A little bit darker than that. And I'm going to scale up my brush size. Right, so that's kind of that's kind of kind of what what I want to do with the with this eye. And again, this is nothing else but good old fashioned poly painting with a very simple brush. All right, and then after this, let's go ahead and work on the on the iris. And looking at the references, uh, the iris it has a very well defined kind of like edge which is almost black. So I'm going to go for a very desaturated color here. Okay. So it's going to be I'm going to try to go for a very stylized version, but I'm going to try to keep the the sculpting and the texturing very towards the realistic side. I like to do that mix. And you've probably seen that in, in if you've seen some of my portfolio images, I tend to do that. Okay, so something like that. That looks all right. I think they also have a bit of reddish, some blood vessels around there. It's just a very subtle thing. Okay, and obviously the, the main color of the iris. It's a very bright brownish or orange color. But again, you'll see that using the, the radial symmetry is very easy to, to, do, to do this. Just a, a few strokes, and the more, obviously, the more radial count that you have, the, the smoother and the faster that, that would be. And then if, um, I'll show you once, you want, once you, you're happy with like, the base color, then you can start refining it with reducing the, the radial count. Uh, do you put everything you do in your portfolio? Um, not, not really, <laughs> not, not at all. Actually, I have, I have tons of um, projects that I have that I have sitting there. Um, some of them, if, if you compare what I share on on social media to what I actually have in my art station, for example, you see there is a, a, a very big difference. Uh, because for my portfolio, I try to handpick and only put the things that, um, you know, that I feel they're good in some way. Like for example, the 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 gun, the alien gun that I that I finished um, a couple of streams ago. So to me, that is not necessarily like a portfolio piece ready that you know I can say, oh, I right, look at what I did. <laughs> you know, it's um it's a it's a good sketch and it looks alright. Uh, but I put it in in our station as well because I wanted to share the the process. And again, it got picked up as a uh, by the the art station staff picks. Which I was surprised by, uh, but that's a, a really nice surprise. So that goes to show that, you know, sometimes you think a, a piece that you create is not portfolio worthy, 
but then you just push it a little bit. You can go the extra mile. There's another <laughs> shameless plug of the course. You go that extra mile and you can just put it into the portfolio and, and it should be should be good. So I don't put everything. Sometimes sometimes I just prefer to keep everything very you know, keep my portfolio clean and, and just use the the pieces that I really, really like. All right. I'm just gonna try to add a few other lines here um, for the iris, but I'm just gonna reduce the radial count to something like five. So you, I have less of these instances, reduce my brush size, and just started to add a bit of color variation here. We can go for seven. I, I try to go for odd numbers here. Uh, just because that will give you a more asymmetrical feel rather than if you have like four or six it's going to be very obvious that you're using symmetry whereas if you interchange uh, numbers that are odd numbers like five three seven so on um, it will give you a, a better you know a better look more asymmetrical so let's go for three I'm gonna add a little bit of green as well. There's a, a bit of greenish color around the edges as well. And I'm just looking at the references that I have on my other screen. All right, let's do a couple more. Um, this time I think I'm gonna just turn off radial symmetry altogether and do a bit more of manual asymmetrical details. Again, I'm not going for a hyper-realistic eye here. Just I wanna have some details so that it doesn't look too, too plain. But try to keep it, you know, like those those details that I'm doing, or these details that I'm doing, are quite exaggerated as well. So, still, I think it's still within the realm of stylized characters. All right. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do a very bright, or slightly brighter yellow here, with a large brush, and I'm just gonna paint here at the bottom. So this is kind of like faking a bit of that, um, the the concave nature of the of the iris. Because this is going to be just a, a sphere. We don't have the, the cornea sort of like bulging out in this case. So I'm just going to fake it with a bit of lighter color here. And similarly, we're going to take a dark brown and create a bit of a shadow here. And that's going to really, really help with the realism of it. A bit darker here. Okay, so I think that looks good. And finally, let's go ahead and create the cornea, sorry, the, the pupil. So a very dark brown color here. And, oops, forgot to turn on my radial symmetry so that it's faster with 32. Um, I'm also gonna turn on off lazy mouse and that is faster. So the pupil is quite quite small for these guys. So I'm gonna leave it like that. And with black. Alright, so I think that's looking alright. I'm just thinking a little bit more of yellow color around there. This is just uh, fine-tuning fine what we already did a little bit. All right, so let's say that I'm happy with this. Let's do a quick save again. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and copy, go to my sketch. And you know what, let's just select 
a pinkish color. So kind of like the the color of the of the skin of this macaque. All right, and then I'm gonna go ahead and paste my eye and put it at the top, and I'm gonna use the Gizmo 3D to put it in place. So I'm gonna scale it down. I'm gonna push it out just for a second. Make sure symmetry is off as well. Right, so the eyes are quite quite prominent as well. So I'm just gonna go for something like that. I think that's good. Um, let's see, maybe a smaller than that. They're actually quite small. The eyes in proportion to the head. And you won't be able to see much of the sclera. You will see only a, um, a little bit of the iris. So I'm just going to push this in a little bit just so that we can see a little bit better the, the size of it. Um, maybe a little bit bigger. And I'm going to put them closer together, like so. All right, so we have the eye there. And we can go ahead and duplicate the eye. So I want to keep it separately. Uh, so that we can keep subdivision levels and, and all that. And I'm going to mirror that. So, oh, I have subdivision levels. So I'm going to delete lower and I'm going to mirror it. Cool. So I still have the original that has all the subdivision levels and this duplicate on the other side uh, that doesn't. Now, actually, before I do that, let me just delete that one uh, because I did it a little bit faster and I actually want to have this on its own so that I can rotate it, move it around, and I'm happy with the placement before I mirror it. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and take this mesh. And we have that as a DynaMesh object already. And I'm going to bring in the clay brush. Now this is, a, I guess, a trick that maybe you'll find useful, which is if you're doing something around the, the eyes of a character, um, what I like to do is place one eye of the character, for example, and then enable just one eye, enable symmetry, and work or sculpt on the other side of the of the head. So you'll see what I mean in a second. But basically, that allows you to fine tune one side without having to deal with the with the other geometry. But you'll see the effect of what you're doing on the other side. It's kind of like a a weird thing to wrap your head around, but um, you know it makes sense. So I'm gonna turn my matcap. Eh, doesn't look as good as I thought. Ah, let's just work with that one. And I'm going to hold the Alt key, and I'm going to start pushing this. So you'll see on the left-hand side, I can already see the effect that I'm doing, but I have this the freedom to explore these um, these shapes on the other side without worrying too much about, you know. Because if I do it in this side, you'll see what, I ha what happened. If I start doing this, it is kind of like constrained. You'll see this line here. This line here, that is the result of this subtool interacting with this subtool when you're sculpting, right? So that's a, a way to avoid that. So let me undo that. I'm going to use the smooth brush. All right, so this is just a very basic starting point for the block out of this, of this guy. Uh, but that already gives us a, a good idea of what sort of things we can do and what need to um, be exaggerated and, and why not. So one thing I would like to do is take my eye, go into the Gizmo 3D, and I'm just going to rotate it in a little bit. So it's going to be slightly cross-eyed. I think it's going to be funny. Not too much, just a tiny bit. And just looking down slightly as well, like so. Cool. And now I can go ahead and duplicate it, delete lower, and mirror it. All right, so I'm going to put this into a folder that I'm going to call eyes, obviously. Cool. Let's do a quick save and we already have a, a pretty decent block out that we can start sculpting around the eyes, but 
as you can see very early on, although everything else except the eyes is very blocky and just primitive shapes, you can already have a, an idea and a sense of the personality of the of the character and how it's gonna look. So that's why it, I kind of like like I kind of like like <laughs> I kind of like to have the the eyes blocked in from the, the very beginning. So they're gonna be very expressive and it's it's good to have them there. Uh, another thing probably that is good at this point is change the material and apply the material. So I'm gonna select a toy material. So click on the material palette and it should be here, toy plastic. And that will give you a very high specular, which is uh, kind of like what I'm after. And yeah, so I think this looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that material is selected. Again, for uh, for you guys should be, I think, draw. Yeah, in the draw material is selected and in a standard UI should be at the top. And yeah, I'm also gonna make sure that I have RGB intensity to 100. That's it, and then fill object. And the fill object would be on the draw, I think, no, color. On the color, fill object, that will be there. So fill object for both of these. Nice, fill object, cool. So now I can go back to, let's say, sculpting material and only the eyes are gonna have that material. So we have that nice specular shape in there. Cool, I'm gonna go back to a gray, gray color so that it's easier to, I don't know, I, I feel it's easier to, to sculpt with these colors than with anything else. If anything, we can just use, nah, let's just keep it simple. Let's do a great, great material. All right, let me see if there's any questions so far. Uh, Mr. Manson, that's what I don't understand in your judgment of the gun. The gun wasn't a portfolio worthy, uh, but for for the people, myself included, it was worthy. <laughs> no, uh, what I mean by I, I don't wanna I don't <laughs> I don't wanna sound like oh this is you know this is just a sketch or whatever because I did put a time and effort into it and I think it looks pretty good. I think I think you should be proud when you create something. I think I think you should be proud of what you create. Um, it's it's just that fine line, right? Before, like, you need to be proud of what you create, or, or you you should be proud of what you create, without um, going that extra or going uh, all the way to the other side and and just fall in love with your creations, because that's that's I think that's that would be the problem. It's all about the extremes. So I'm not saying that it's you know it's just oh it's just a sketch and it's not portfolio worthy. What I meant by not portfolio worthy is that. It's maybe not something that I would say uh, that I would. How can I put it? It's not something that I'd say. This is my portfolio uh, for because for for a few reasons. I don't do a lot of hard surface modeling and I don't do a lot of guns or, or props. Uh, my main focus is concept art and, and and character design really. So having that gun, what I meant by that is is not necessarily portfolio worthy for my portfolio for the type of things that I want to show. Uh, however, I put it there anyway because I wanted to to share with everyone uh, the process that I think is valuable. But um, yeah, so hopefully that's a little bit complete. Well, a little bit um, a messy explanation, but I hope I hope that uh, clears it out a little bit. So my judgment was more about that. Like it's not it's not portfolio worthy because it's not the type of thing that I w I would like to spend you know my day a day doing because I prefer to do characters and, and that, type, that type of thing and, and you know and teaching what I know uh, rather than creating props and, and guns which it sometimes every now and again is pretty cool but that's why my judgment of the gun was in a portfolio worthy not because I thought it was rubbish I think it looks pretty decent for the, the, the amount of time that we spend on it and the tools that we use um, but it's not it's not my portfolio worthy put it that way like I don't, I don't want to have it associated with the type of things that I do uh, it's there for the time being, and I might get rid of it. Uh, but you know, if it if it works and if it um, if it helps people out, I'll leave it there. And <laughs> hopefully that makes sense. Uh, Comics Legend, do you have a collection of eyes you created from all your previous model? Yes, I do have a few eyes, especially for uh, real time eyes. Or um, if you remember the um, Uncle Festa, uh, so I have a an eye that is like hyper realistic type of eye that is all set up for 
Maya and Arnold and you know it has all the maps and everything and I can very easily tweak it to to using another projects I have another eye that is more uh, type of like real time that I created for real time so it has uh, you know the the eye transition like the the watery effect or the yeah the like the tears if you will um, it also has like a shadow and so it's all set up for for real time render for like Marmoset or uh, that type of stuff uh, so I use those in different projects but I tend to work everything from scratch um, although I have resources for very specific things I only use those resources if there is a time constraint so if I have to deliver something like you know in in two weeks or, or whatever it is and that's gonna make my workflow faster I will definitely use pre-made resources that I have however if I have the time like in this case I'm just you know sculpting and, and chilling out with, with you guys doing that uh, I prefer to build it from scratch uh, not only because that gives me more practice but also because if I like it at the end I can just turn it into a new resource to use later on so yeah, hopefully that answers the question. Um, hey all, hey Bjorn Ragnarsson. Um, Comics Legend, what is the difference between copy and paste and paste and a pen? So copy and paste just uh, copy a tool or another a sub tool from another tool into another tool. So what I did with the with the eye was just copy here, copy, go here and paste. It's just like a copy paste in any other software really, like Word. Um, copy paste. Um, append and insert are a little bit different. Append is just create a new um, a new geometry, really a new subtool that you don't have previously made. So if you click append, it will give you this option to append anything. Uh, you can also use append to to append the the sphere or whatever you created beforehand. And the difference between append and insert is that if you click append, it will be added to the bottom of the list. If you click insert, it will be right below whatever um, subtool you have selected. So if I click insert here, it will be just below that one. That's pretty much it. All right, so let's go ahead and move on. Um, I think what I'll do is me merge these three together. I'm gonna keep the this head separate for the time being, but everything else I'm gonna merge it down. So I'm gonna click uh, here on the demerge palette. I'm gonna merge down, okay, merge down, okay. So now we have this, this is it's like its own subtool. All right, I wanna, I wanna keep everything rather blocky, like I mentioned, but I need to start like defining some, some shapes a bit better. So I wanna bring the move, br the move brush with the Accu Curve enable. And I'm just gonna start pushing this up. So this is gonna hopefully give that, you know what, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it like that, like that but I'm, I'm gonna insert some meshes. Just gonna give it a, a tiny bit more of shape so it's not so geometrical. that works let's go ahead and hold control click and drag and now we are merging everything into a dynamic probably let's go ahead and increase the resolution a bit all right and I'm going to use the smooth brush to soften edges a, a little bit more going to solo mode do a quick save I don't know what happened there Yeah, the smooth brush is a little bit sluggish. And let's go to the clay brush, and I'm just gonna fix these areas very quickly. Transition on anything. All right, although you won't see any of that. All right, so let's work on the eyes area first, and then on the on the nose. Uh, well then, let's do the nose because the, the nose should be pretty pretty quick. So I'm just gonna use the clay brush to fine tune this transition, and the nose of these guys are pretty pretty thin actually. I'm just gonna leave it very high up in proportion, and actually let's 
let's refine this as well. So I'm going to hold, I'm holding Alt for this area here, just to give it a bit more of that curvature. So it's a little bit more curved, but still within the stylized the stylized um, limits, I guess. So this the the nose, like I said, is pretty thin. Just looking at the references here, a bunch of different references I collected. Um, yeah, I think it's something something like that would work. and I'm just using the smooth brush. Um, this is another reason I like to keep everything at this point very very low resolution because using the, the normal, st the, standard, the standard smooth brush, it just clears up everything and maintains everything a bit more, uh, a bit more clean. Just gonna refine these bits. And maybe we can just go ahead and use the Maybe the standard brush to do a bit of the suggestion here for the lip. Although the lip of these guys, the bottom lip is not so so prominent. But let's do something like this, and then bring in the clay brush again, and then we can refine this transition, these volumes here. I think this, uh, I need to fix the, the mouth a little bit. I'm going to go for the damp standard brush and I'm just going to extend that quite a bit. Okay, something like that. And let's go ahead and again, using the clay brush, just refine this. Uh, you can use any brush really to, to refine this. I try to constrain myself to just a, a few brushes at this point. All right. So that looks that looks interesting. Uh, let's go ahead and bring in the move brush and I'm just going to refine these shapes a bit more. So just pushing and pulling certain areas to keep a kind of like a clean set of shapes <laughs> and also we can bring in the edge polish as well to to polish really these areas so i don't want this bottom part to be so rounded so the edge polish is really good for uh, hard surface modeling but i use it a ton uh, at this at this stage as well just because you know it gives you those allows you to set up these planes really easy very nicely. And that's kind of like what we're trying to do, right? At this stage is just set up the the basic shapes and the primary shapes. All right. So, let's do a quick save. Um like I said for the for the eyes, I think I want to make the like the eyebrow region even more prominent than what I have here. So, we can do a couple of things. We can import a new mesh, mesh it together. Or we can insert a a cube. We can insert something. <laughs> so let's do that. Let's use the IMM primitive brush. Uh, no, not the IMM. Oh yeah, let's let's use this one. Just gonna select a a cube, and I'm just gonna click and drag here to add that cube. Right, and bring in the Gizmo 3D. So now. The Gizmo 3D allows us to fine tune this shape. Uh, yeah, that's, that's what I was afraid of. You know what? Let's let's undo that. I'm gonna turn off symmetry, 
and I'm going to do it. So that the only reason I'm going to do that is because it is going to be easier to work with this uh, with the gizmo. So same thing, just dragging it only on one side, and then I'm going to use the gizmo to position this guy around there. So that's going to help with the... Actually, let's just... Hang on. <laughs> let, me, let me show you what I'm trying to do. Right, so I think this one is this one is a good example here. So with the cube, what I'm trying to do is set something like that. This is a very thin one. All right. Right, so if I set this cube here and then I use another one around there, it creates that very sharp, nice angle here and then we just fill this area and then I just duplicate or, or mirror and well this one right there. Right? And also now that we're here in this reference, you'll see that the the nose is actually really thin and it sort of like spreads here. Right? So um, in these references, the ratio of the nose, I, I might change this, uh, but you'll see that the eyes are kind of like in this ratio, the mouth as well, and the nose is quite long. Whereas what I have is the opposite, right? I have the nose really high up. So I might change this. We'll we'll try both and see what works. Um, I just thought that, you know, looks interesting. But, you know, it's such a prominent feature for this type of macaques and, and primates that I might have to change that. Anyway, so um, now I have this cube in here. I'm just going to try to give it a tiny little bit of expression to this guy. Like so. And then holding control, click and drag, it just duplicates that mesh. And that's how I can give it a bit more, you know, that that type of uh, arc or whatever. Right? Cool. So I think that works. Uh, let's go ahead and hold control, click and drag, click and drag again. Oh no, before I click and drag, uh, actually, because we use the insert brush, select the, the move brush now, uh, because we select the, the insert brush, we should have different polygroups, as you can see. So I can hold control and shift and click on those. And I'm going to go ahead and click once outside to mask, invert the mask, uh, sorry, inver uh, bring in everything to make it visible. Click once with holding control to invert that mask. And now we can do a quick refinement of this before we mesh everything. You know, taking advantage that these insert meshes are quite low polygon as well. So I'm just going to push this one back. that sort of thing and I think we can just push it down a bit more and even just to scale it down all right and then click and drag to remove the mask and now I'm gonna go ahead and click on mirror and weld so now it just mirrored the entire subtool and let's go ahead and dynamic it again all right so now this is gonna be part of it and we can go ahead and use the smooth brush with symmetry enable to just fine tune this all right and again we can use um, we can use anything I'm going to use the clay builder brush just because it's fast to build up volumes and I'm going to use this one to refine this this area holding alt to push things in and just using the normal effect to refine this I'm going to go into solo mode as well and we can use this um, clay builder brush here to create these the cheekbones I don't want this part to be as blocky. I 
actually want to smooth this area a little bit more and just give it a bit more curvature just using the, the clay buildup all around and refine this transition a bit more all right so I think we're getting there <laughs> um, I'm gonna click control click and drag to redynamish smooth everything out a bit and hopefully you can see the what the idea was with those um, primitives right um, now I think that the forehead or this part of the this this area here is a little bit too high uh, so something we can do is do a quick mask of all that and you know make, we can blur a little bit invert that use the gizmo to scale that down a bit and just push it down uh, maybe we can use uh, the mask pen as well to protect some of the regions of the eye so hold control click and mask this out right and bring it down as well okay click and drag control click and drag and obviously just using the smooth brush we can just refine that those edges all right so right now this guy looks pretty scared of something uh, whereas these guys are actually pretty relaxed or they 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 look pretty relaxed most of the time they're in a in a sauna um i think i read the other day well not read i i watched a, a documentary um where it says something about that the these guys the the japanese macaques the when they go into these like um hot spring waters it's a it's a learned behavior it's not like uh, which is i th i just found it really interesting because it's not um it's not an instinctive thing or it wasn't an instinctive thing but they just um group themselves in the in that sort of like area and those colonies and then some guy just went in there and found it like to be very cozy and warm and then it just become like the other ones like it, it's kind of like a learned behavior that was passed on and now they'll just it's like a natural thing for them i don't know <laughs> it's just really interesting how um how that that part of the evolution works all right so let's go ahead and tweak the the nose because uh, it doesn't really look like the type of, you know, primer that I'm trying to do. So I'm going to go ahead and I think the easier one, the easiest way will be just to hold Alt, is to remove this line, uh, remove this nose. And I'm just going to create a little lump here. All right. So that changes the expression and everything you know completely but I think it looks closer to what I'm trying to do all right so that little single simple change it just changes completely the kind of like the look and feel of the character and that has to do with the proportions really nothing else I mean the placement obviously of the nose but you know it changes um, it changes from like a little nose in proportion to let's say for the forehead to a massive one in relation you know it's, this is like 3x almost hopefully that makes sense uh, so yeah that changes things quite a bit um, let's go ahead and also using the clay brush I'm just gonna give this a little bit more volume This, this part of the, the lips are quite prominent. Another thing that I that I watched in this documentary as well about these um, these macaques is that, like I said, they're very intelligent creatures, and they were showing how I think they left some some potatoes uh, for them or something, and and they were like dipping them like they were taking them and cleaning them in the water and also dipping them in the in the salt water because that uh, would obviously give them that that salty flavor for the potatoes it's really really cool all right i think i'm going to increase the size actually let's change to clay builder brush like i said 
It is kind of like the same as the clay brush. It just allows you to build these volumes a little bit faster. So just in an effort to to save some time here for the for the stream, we're we're at good pace. I mean, we still have about 45 minutes, so I reckon we can we can finish with the with the block out of this guy very very easily. All right. Cool. So. Um, obviously, what I feel like we're missing, I think we need to fine-tune the top area, the cheekbones. And I see some some activity in the chat. I'll just check that in a second. All right, so um, yeah, so what I was saying is that I think we're missing the eyes just to give this guy, this guy the the really chill expression that these macaques are kind of like known for, or photographs, uh, photograph with. So we'll do that in just a second. Uh, let's do a quick save. Let's see what's happening in the chat. If you guys have any questions, feel free to to show them. I'm happy to you know take little breaks and talk about. I mean, I'm just talking about macaques, so <laughs> whatever, whatever you want uh, to chat about, I'm I'm cool with it. What's the difference? Oh, I already got that one. Got it, Mr. Manson. Cool. Uh, Comics Legend, thanks. Um, hello, Carlos. Carlos Ser Morales Umaña. Hey, Pablito, you're my friend. How's it going, Puchos? Comics Legend, other videos you have mentioned, um, you have sometimes used the spotlight feature to have your reference on screen. Do you prefer that method or just looking at reference on other screens? Nowadays, I prefer, uh, beforehand, I didn't have the Cintiq that I have now. So I have just the uh, Intos Pro. And in that case, I would prefer to have my, my references on the screen. But now I prefer to just have a lot of space to to freely scope with and constantly refer back to another screen, another monitor that I have on my my right hand side where I have all my all my um, references. Uh, I'm using uh, Pure Ref, so this little software that I move around, it's it's a fantastic little software. Uh, it's free and it's called Pure Ref. Um, but if you if you if you want, you can just donate a little bit. I think it's definitely worth it. And anyway, it, it's a it's a little software that you can also change to to make it transparent so that it sits on top of what you're doing, and that's another option that you have. And there is a guide in the Silver's guides, actually, uh, where I show you how I use kind of like a, a compromise between the spotlight and having the reference on the other side. And I cannot remember the name, but if you if you go to the tutorials page and just search for uh, image reference or image plane, you'll be able to find it. And I basically collect a bunch of references and I put them into a single image, like the, the size of my canvas, and then import that as, a, as an image plane. So what happens is that now I have all the, the references at the back of my character, whereas with the spotlight, they always sit on top. So if you put them in the image plane behind it, you will have, instead of having a gray background, you have a, a background full of references and then you can just move your character around and, and see what's behind it. Uh, so that's a, a really good compromise and that's the method that I use when I'm using the, uh, the Mobile Studio Pro, the, 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 the Mobile Studio Pro, the, the Wacom tablet that is kind of like the Cintiq but mobile uh, because obviously I don't have other, other screens to refer to. So I use that technique. Uh, hopefully that answers the question. Um, Hello, RD Anim, how's it going? And Insanity DS, access to streaming Twitch seguido. Um, I do it every week, uh, roughly, yeah, every week. Uh, with Here, I mean, with the Sirius guides, uh, Sirius, the Sirius Live. So feel free to tune in. Uh, today is like an odd day. I usually do it on, on, on Fridays, on my Fridays, for most of you guys would be Thursday, so PST, PDT. Pacific Standard Time, <laughs> that's what it means. Um, so yeah. Hey, hey Ashley, how's it going? Nice monkey eyes. Thanks you so much. Um, Ashley, for those for those who don't know, but I'm sure you know, um, A cubed 
as aka actually aka a cube also does fantastic streams here in in um Zero's live she actually put it in the zero central so go to the zero central and check it out because there's some really cool stuff it's it's crazy weird she I, i'm sure she doesn't mind mind me saying it but um she does really weird stuff that are really cool <laughs> all right um javier hey javier how's it going Uh, now, that, now that Javier is here as well, um, I would I would recommend you guys go to our station as well and check Javier Forquez. Uh, he just posted like a new new creature that looks really really cool, uh, the Rosh Roshak creature I think. So definitely check it out. Um, what about the polish brush instead of the other uses, Puchos? What about the polish brush instead of other you use as in? Uh, for make hard uh, for making hard modeling or hard surface modeling, uh, yeah, I use the the H pro, the H polish quite a bit just to get this very not just for the hard surface, but you know if I'm doing something like blocking out these shapes, uh, it just maintains the it, keeps, it it helps me to keep an eye on on the planes of the face, for example. Uh, another option if you don't want to use the H polish quite a bit is to redynamesh with um, the polish enable. So if I click polish and redynamesh, you'll see there's there's a little bit of sharpness going. Uh, so that's another option. Just don't do that. Um, I also use the the polish, the normal polish brush, this polish brush, um, which is very similar, but it maintains it just polishes everything really nicely. And so all of this blobby area here, I mean, I don't do it at this stage, but you know, it just polishes everything and keeps everything super clean. Where, where, without uh, necessarily flatting it, which is what the edge polish does. All right, um, let's do a couple more, a couple more questions, and then we we do the eyelids because I think you guys are gonna like the the little technique I'm gonna show you with that. So, Comics Legend, thanks, no worries, Mr. Manson. Is it possible to export fiber mesh to Substance Painter or Marmoset? Uh, it is possible. I I tried, I did it once in Substance Painter, and it crashed uh, just because I had a lot of fibers. Uh, what you can do is create fiber mesh that have a single sided polygon. So just um, like kind of like hair cards for games. And that would that would, that would work fine. Uh, just make sure that when you create the fibers, you assign a texture or something so that when you create it, it already has uh, UVs and it just helps you to, you know, having the having to go through the process of creating UVs for the for the fibers. Uh, um, Marmoset can handle lots of polygons, uh, so you can just literally export the fibers as an OBJ file and put it into Marmoset. Should be a problem. Uh, weird is fair, <laughs> actually. Yeah, weird is fair. I, th I said weird by co but cool, so I think I'm safe there. <laughs> Comics legend, awesome. All right, so let's go ahead and continue with this. Uh, let's create the eyes. So for the eyes, what I'll do is I'm gonna append a a sphere 3D, that one looks good. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn everything off except this sphere and the eyes. So I'm gonna go into transparent and turn off ghost. And these two switches for you guys are on the transform palette. Uh, where are they? Here, transparent and ghost. And with the gizmo 3D, I'm just gonna place this guy roughly on top of the eye. So I want some really thick eyelids. So I'm just gonna make sure that I set it kind of like in there. Hang on a second. Yeah, something like that. So um, I'll show you what I'm trying to do. So the, the outer sphere that I'm creating, that's gonna be the eyelids. And this gap that I'm leaving between the actual eye and the rest that's kind of like the thickness so that's going to be the um, the obvious thickness once i turn this into a into a eyelid <laughs> all right so i'm going to only work on one eye so that then i can easily when i'm happy with it i can mirror it to the other side cool so let's move that one back a bit just trying to it doesn't have to be perfect but you know it just gives you a, a good idea. And I'm gonna turn that into a Dynamesh 
maybe with a higher resolution than that. There we go. And I'm going to hold, well, I'll bring my custom palette. I'm going to polish this a tiny bit just so that this looks a little bit better. And I'm going to duplicate this sphere. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that. I'm going to turn it off for the time being. And I'm going to select the original one that we just placed. And I'm going to use the clip brushes to clip an area. So I'm going to hold. Actually, I'm going to do it from this angle. I'm going to hold Control and Shift. Oops. Control and Shift. Ah, oh, Control, Shift. Let me just think. Control, Shift, and I get this line. So the the area that has, or the, the side of the line that has the, the shading version of the shadow, that's going to be clipped. Uh, but once I start with this line, I can hold Alt anywhere and create a little point to create kind of like a Bessier curve. So if I go over this area, click Alt, now I have this point where I can do this type of thing. So I'm going to go for something like that, right? So Sirius is going to clip that and give me this type of stuff. Um, in this case, I mean, it doesn't really matter that it has, you know what, let me just undo that. I'm going to keep it simple for you guys. Uh, you don't have to do it with a curve. Uh, we'll do that with a move brush. Just hold control and shift, click and drag, and then just clip it around there. All right, so that's one. Now let's move to the other one, to the other duplicate of that um, C-sphere. And it's not C-sphere, it's sphere. And let's do the same thing. Just going to clip it. This time I'm going to clip the other side. That's why I started from left to right. And and that's it. So we have like two half, uh, two half spheres. Let's get out of transparent. And now we can use the gizmo to basically rotate those half spheres or semi spheres to generate the expression of this guy. So I'm going to start with the bottom eyelid. So I'm going to just rotate. Remember that uh, that's why we started with a with a sphere because the gizmo is right in the center. So it doesn't matter how I rotate this; it's going to be always in the center. So I can play around with a with a nice expression for this guy. And I'm going to look at my references here. All right. Um, the next one. So this is gonna be the this is gonna be the eyelid that's really gonna give this guy the expression of like kind of like chill and sleepy. The other one can actually be a little bit lower. A bit more, I think. I th I think it's all about making that top eyelid almost reach the the pupil to make it very chill and sleepy. There we go. And what I'll do is just select this one, uh, the top one, and go mirror and well, and then the other one, mirror and well. So now we have the expression, and ob obviously this is intersecting, but it doesn't matter. Uh, at least we have the initial part of the mesh. So let's bring in the, the rest of the guy, and there we go. Now we have a, a more interesting expression. And let's go ahead and merge these two together. So merge down, okay. I'm going to keep these eyelids or the yeah the spheres that I use for the eyelids separately for a little bit uh, because I'm going to fine tune the rest. So I don't want to have to, you know, protect these later on. So that's why I keep it as a separate sub tool. So you'll see the, the change in this guy from this, you know, kind of like blank expression to this, which looks a little bit more cool. Um, again, I like the, the thickness of this eyelid. Maybe, maybe it's too much. So all we need to do is just push it back a bit. Not that one, sorry, that one. Just a little bit. There we go. And let's do a quick save. And like I said, using the move brush with the Accu Curve Enable, we can just go ahead and refine this a little bit more. Again, all I'm doing here is just using the move brush with the curve to kind of like sharpen these transitions. Or not sharpen it, but you know, make them more obvious. Um, we'll probably have to 
push and let's see let's just try to push everything back a bit here okay that's a little bit better and we want to keep the the little nose well not little but the, the thin nose thin and in, in check all right let's just move all that and let's just work a little bit on the on the roundness of this we can use the clay brush as well the clay builder brush And I mean, at this point, all I'm doing is just judging the, the entire silhouette, the primary shapes and, and refining some of these shapes. But I think the, the expression uh, really, really helps. And another thing we can do is, I mean, at, at this point, we can go to the to the eyes, really, and turn them into a dynamish. Let's see, we probably need more resolution than that. All right, and then make sure that symmetry is enabled. Smooth things a little bit, right? And also use the move brush to sort of like refine kind of like this, uh, the lacrimal area. And also we probably have to hold control, click and drag to mask this area. And so that we can bring in this, this part of the eyelid, the top eyelid down a bit. I think I did something. Ooh, let's do a quick save. <laughs> Ooh, that was close. All right, so just a, a little bit of refinement here on the eyelids, but you'll see it's just move brush, nothing nothing too crazy. And I'm just gonna look at the, the reference. Um, it's kind of like an almond shape eye. And this part of the eye is kind of like more rounded and the the eyelid tend to thin out here. Invert the mask and so I can push this other bit as well. There we go. Clear the mask and we can go ahead and hold control, click and drag to redynamish all that and we can Obviously, smooth that a bit. All right, so I think that's looking good. Um, at this point, what I like to do, uh, like let's say that I have this, I, I should have done it before, as in before I did the dynamesh for these eyelids, but I like to keep the the original, so like the the original meshes in a separate folder, like I've done. Like if you if you watch the previous streams, that's kind of like what I do. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate the eyelids. that outside of this and I'm gonna create a new folder for this called OR and I just call it OR for, for me to oh no hang on what did I do I renamed it I need to create a new folder OR for original and I'm gonna I'm gonna do the same thing here for the head duplicate let's chuck that in there and the head itself duplicate put that in there all right so that way if I make a mistake I can just easily go back to this stage um, you can also just simply save incrementally with different files. I just, you know, I, I use uh, I use both methods just to to be to be safe. So I do save incrementally, but I also do this type of thing so that I, you know, it's like a double backup. Um, so now at this point, I can just take this sphere, make sure symmetry is enabled, and I'm just gonna refine the, the shape of the head. Uh, you won't be able to see any of this really because the idea is that it's going to be covered by the fur. But just as a, as a working work in progress type of thing, it's good to to have an idea of where we, what we're doing. All right, and let's go ahead and merge these two together. So I'm going to merge down, click OK. And that's the reason I saved the originals because now I'm going to combine these these um, these meshes using Dynamesh. 
So I'm going to increase the dynamic resolution a tiny bit just because I think we had different resolutions in those two. So just to keep all the details, control click and drag. I think that's that's fair. Actually, turn off polish. I don't, I don't want polish right now. But a little bit more resolution. There we go. And now we can go ahead and start smoothing this out. Uh, for this area, now that we have quite a bit of resolution, we can use the Smooth Strong. So that allows us to smooth areas a little bit faster. Okay. I think we're getting somewhere. I'm just going to fix a couple of things here at the back. You won't see it, but it's better to keep things clean, even though you won't see it. Uh, especially if you want to do some kind of like remeshing or, or retopology. It's good to have a, a good base. Okay. Um, I'm going to bring in the dam standard brush as well. And I'm just going to refine the, the gap here for the mouth. All right, and I think we're in a good shape. I'm gonna just do a, a little hint of the shape of the nose, which is kind of weird. Maybe a little bit closer together. So it's just kind of like a, a little hole here and then it just wraps up. It has like this little curvature towards the, the top. Um, a cool thing, this is another trick, um, when you're doing like noses or, or even like the mouth, uh, the mouth bag, if you were going to work with a, with a mouth open, is to mask a, a tiny little bit of the area that you want to push in. So I'm going to use the mask, uh, the mask pen holding control, right? And just mask this tiny bit, invert that, um, maybe that's too, too, um, we need a little bit more. All right, mask this area, invert that mask, select the gizmo 3D, center that to the unmask area with this little icon in the gizmo, and then I'm just gonna push this in like so, right? So that creates like a, a larger kind of gap. Um, maybe not too much, <laughs> I exaggerated things. Just a tiny bit more so that it's not, that it's a little bit deeper. I guess that's the really what I'm trying to do. And then clear the mask. And we can go ahead and smooth things. Out. Whoops. Let's redynamish first, so we have more geometry. And before I smooth this, I just want to add a bit more of, of thickness with the inflate brush. All right. Now we can smooth this area, and you'll see there's a, a nice gap. I mean, you can do it with brushes, but that's just a nice little trick that you can use. And with the move brush, I'm just going to fine tune the shape of it. Let's see. Kind of like, actually, I'm going to mask, oops, use the mask lasso to mask out an area like so, so that we can push this a bit closer. And then use the dam standard brush. Just kind of like to define this this lip area as well. We'll probably get into some of the wrinkles and, and stuff in the in the next the next stream, but again it's, it's good to have a a good idea from the from the block out stage. Um, I think not entirely happy with the with the shape. I think we can do something a bit better. And I think the problem is that the this part of the nose at the bottom is a little bit thinner here. And it just tends to thin out here. It's very interesting shapes actually.
it's kind of like the nostrils are here. I'm just looking at the references as I do this. <laughs> All right, and I'll see some of some activity here in the chat. I'll just check that in just a second. All right, I think. Uh, I think I'm happy with this, all happier, happier than before. All right, obviously once you see it with the rest, it just kind of like looks a little bit too detailed compared to the rest and I just want to keep this quite stylized. So we have to come back to the to the nose a bit. Actually, let's try something. I'm going to use the inflate brush with an alt just to inflate these gaps here. So this larger and then use the normal inflate to push things. All right, I think that's that's a little bit better. Let's control click and drag to redynamesh, bring everything back. And I think we are getting somewhere. So I'm going to use the move brushes to refine this. I'm going to try to find a a profile version of this guy. And again, I'm exaggerating stuff, obviously I'm not going for, I'm going for the stylized version, so. I'm going smooth, wasn't I? Yeah. I'm gonna have a look at the chat, have a sip of water and see if you guys have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. Alrighty, uh, I'm gonna do a quick save. And let's have a look. Uh, awesome comic artist, A Cube. You just ah, oh, thanks Ashley. Appreciate the kind words. Um, Doom, Doom, lol, Ashley, A Cube. <laughs> thanks for thanks for sharing all all the. All the links, Ashley. Appreciate it. <laughs> um, thanks, Mad Dog. All right, comics legend. Uh, for the eyelids, if these were to be used in a movie, would would the eyelids be created differently? Ah, uh, yes. As in, uh, it depends. This uh, at this point, this is just a sketch, so you could start with this. Uh, I think it's it's more about the retopology, how you approach the retopology, and how you refine those um, those loops if you were doing a, a cinematic uh, character. So it really depends on, on the output. Um, I, I, I like to not worry about that until later on. So like with the, with the gun example, uh, what I showed you before, uh, like I said, I don't worry about it, whether it's for games or cinematic or anything or a concept until the very end. I just work on designing and, and have the freedom of, like like I'm doing right now, just playing around with shapes. And once I'm happy with the design itself, which is which I think is the most important thing that communicates something, uh, once I have that ready, then I can worry about what's the output. Uh, if I know what the output is going to be from the very beginning, as in uh, I get a you know I get a, a job that I need to create a cinematic version of this character, uh, I will probably from this point that is rather sketchy, I will start to clean it up a little bit more uh, earlier on so that I can refine the details and all that with a with a cleaner topology. But uh, just to, this is a quick, 
quick reference here. Um, I don't know if you guys can see that. Okay, yep. So for a cinematic, for example, or a, yeah, for a cinematic mainly, what I would do is once I have this, I will do a manual retopology and I will concentrate on, well, first of all, the the eyelids, I will work with the eyes uh, semi-open, like kind of like a neutral, not totally closed, but not totally open, uh, so that I can place, let's say, I'm just going to do it on one side. So here is the, the topology that I would use, or like how I would think about it. Right, so that those those will be kind of like loops. Then I will have another one obviously here to refine this area. And then here I will probably connect do kind of like this mask. Right? So that connects to the other to the other eye and so on and so forth. So that's uh that's if I were to do something like a manual ray topology. Right, uh, but the key is in creating the, for example, this one, this first. Let's just do it with a, with a darker red color. So the key would be this and this, as well as this one. And this one and the, one around, right? Uh, just because these ones are the ones that, uh, or the these are the, the loops that will define the main shapes. You can also, probably do another one here. So maybe not. Uh, maybe not. And then the key once um, once I have this established is to add the the geometry around the eye. So I will start with quite a bit of. I mean this is not great, but I would probably add quite a few of these uh, loops in here, whereas in this area I may only have one, for example, and you know the the space between those will will vary depending on the on the on the place but what uh, what having multiple loops that there are actually loops around the eye allows you to do is that when the the rigger and the person that is rigging the character um and doing the weight painting and all that it allows them to have a lot of geometry to play around with the the deformation in the animation so that's just something to keep in mind but it's again it's something that I don't worry about until I have to do it <laughs> um I don't know if that makes sense and, and answers your question. Comics legend. Um, the Seer Serion. Hey, how you going, man? Glad to have you here. Uh, Yoda. I want to sculpt. I, I want to sculpt smooth in Seerush, but I'm just too afraid to start. I don't know. <laughs> it's cool something. It's, uh, it's not smooth something. Sculpt something in Seerush. Uh, man, just go ahead and do it. There's not. You you will fail like everyone else and like I did at the beginning. And it's just a matter of keep going through it and push through. <laughs> I, I, that's that sounds like very discouraging. Like you will fail, uh, but you know, like if you, I I don't I'm not I'm not the type of person that would say, ah, oh, if you pan, if you put mine to to it, you will you will absolutely do it or whatever. I I don't think that's true. <laughs> I don't think that you can just put your mind to do whatever you want and then do it. Sometimes you can't. <laughs> but if you persevere and then you you progress, you, that's totally that's totally real. So, if you do it the first time, you might you might you might fail or you might be happy with the result, but it not be as good as you thought. Uh the 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 key I think is just to keep going. So, to do it again and do it better. And it's not about finding, you know, creating everything perfect. As long as you're creating some progress or that you're making progress, I think that's that's the whole point. Um, cool. What do you use uh, for to show your retopology? Ah, there it is. The, there's always that that question in the chat. Uh, this one right here, it's called. Epic Pen, which is like the little software that I use to explain things and paint on top of stuff. Uh, so Epic Pen. <laughs> Sorry, I closed it. Uh, Epic Pen is the one that I use. All right, so we have about 10, 10 more minutes. Um, I reckon 
I reckon I'm just gonna block out the the body, which is gonna be just a very simple shape, uh, and then I'll leave it there, and we'll see we'll see what we can do in the next stream. So let's do a quick save. Let's append a sphere for the body. Just push that this down. Um, and I'm just going to scale these in the z-axis, make sure that symmetry is enabled as well. And rotate that. Scale in the x-axis. So I think that's that's a fair um, initial shape for the body. Let's push it back a bit. And also I'm going to hold control, click and drag. Whoops. Let's actually, so it's easier. Let's just duplicate it. So we have two of these cylinders. And I'm just gonna, again, it's gonna be very simple and you probably won't see, I'm not gonna do the entire body. This is just gonna be another concept. Let's rotate things a bit. So just having two different spheres allows you to create a, a more interesting shape just rather than just the sphere, but still keeping things very, very simple. Right, uh, I'm going to merge these two down. Yep, turn that into a DynaMesh object. And we can use just a quick polish for all that. And let's go ahead and do move brush with AccuCurve very, very quickly. Now, I'm not going for anatomical correctness in this in this model, so I'm not gonna try to even find anatomy. Uh, I'm just using the reference to, to get the overall volume because all of this is gonna be covered by fur and again, it's gonna be quite stylized, so I don't need to, I, need, I don't need to worry too much about it. I'm just, I'm, more than anything, I'm just concentrating on, on getting a, a nice sort of volume that I can, that I can grow some fine fiber mesh from. But that's, that's about it really. That's, that's all I'm going to do for the body. It's just a blob of clay that I can, I can use as a base. That's all I'm doing. All right. Cool. So I think I'm going to start wrapping it up here. If you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to put in the chat. I'll, I'll try to answer them before I wrap up. Uh, but just as a quick teaser of what we're going to do next time, uh, I'm going to do very, very roughly um, growing the fiber mesh just to see how this looks. So because right now it looks kind of like interesting but boring. <laughs> so I'm going to use this as an example of what I'm going to do later. So I'm going to solo mode with the mask pen. I'm just going to mask an area that I don't want to grow stuff or fiber mesh from. Right, something like that. Now I'm going to do the same thing in this one. I'm just masking out an area that I'm gonna grow fiber. I'm not, I'm gonna do it properly next time. I just wanna have a a good indication of whether or not we're in the right track. And this one is gonna be all covered. So I wanna start with the with the head. Again, this is not gonna be the final one. I'll do a more thorough process later on. And I'm gonna change the color straight away. So the base is gonna be kind of dark, dark gray, whereas the tip is going to be more on the yellow side. Uh, maybe not too much. That's it. And maybe change that to skin shade. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and increase the mask fibers. 
the, the maximum fibers. And this guy has a pretty thick, th it's one of the, yeah, it's pretty, pretty thick. Actually, just a, another fun fact, I, now that I remember, I think the, the C order has the thickest hair of, on, on animals, which is surprising. Again, don't quote me on that, it might be wrong. I just uh, remember from the same documentary I saw. So. All right, so um, one thing I'll do is increase the length, obviously. So now this looks more interesting, this weird guy. Um, let's do a quick BPR to see if the fibers will work. So BPR. Again, we'll do this a little bit more thoroughly. Um, like um, a better process next next stream. But you can see already that already looks pretty pretty decent. So I might just um, I might just save these settings. So let's save that. Let's save that setting somewhere here in the stream. So what's today's date? Today is, for me, 17. Cool. So now that I save that, I can just go ahead and accept that. Then now in this one, I can go ahead and preview and I'm gonna open the ones that I already saved so we have the same settings and obviously this 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 case we need less fibers here and let's use the gravity accept and then the body and let's go ahead and import the ones that I just saved This one, this fibers, actually, it's going to solo mode. I'm gonna mask out this area. Yep. Yep. So that's that's kind of like what I'm looking for. Just a very chill monkey in a in a sauna. Uh, I'm gonna push that down. Click accept. Yes. All right. So obviously this is really quick, but at least it gives you an idea. Um, actually, let's also. This is kind of like prototyping, right? So let's give it that reddish color of this monkey. There we go. Do a quick save, and again we'll do we'll do the the grooming and everything and proper fiber mesh. In the next next stream but that gives you uh, an idea I'm gonna just do a quick tweak of the lighting here do a quick render and that's it I'm gonna wrap it up here guys uh, if you have any questions put it in the in the chat and we'll we'll do a, a quick Q&A before I move on who uh, what do you use to show your top of fantastic thank you thank you comics legend the third Thanks, I'll keep my, I'll keep, uh, what, I'll help for the meeting, cool. Um, that's a philosopher monkey, yeah, it's a, it's a chill monkey. Uh, the question, uh, Epic Pen, I should sponsor you. I know, every, <laughs> every, every single um, episode, I, I promote the Epic Pen, but it's, you know, it's such a good software that, um, at least if you're explaining something, I think it's really good. Cool. Um, late again, damn it. What's up? Hey, Maya, how's it going? Uh, we just did that little monkey today. I mean, it's just a, a rough, a rough concept. Uh, we'll we'll polish it in the next stream. But at least at least you get an, an idea. Uh, if you look at it just straight away as it is without doing any other work, at least you have an idea of what type of monkey it is or what's the yeah what well, not a monkey a um, macaque primate. Um, cool. Uh, interesting that I made the same blob of mass, but my model does not look <laughs> cool. Um, I think if you want to make sure that you have, basically make sure that the primary shapes are fine. Um, if you remove all the details, which actually they don't have any details at this point, if you remove all that and just concentrate on the very basic shapes, um, that's when you realize that 
that's all you need just to make sure that the primary shapes are working because those are like the first thing that people will read not the details or anything like that so um, although having the fibers in this case make it look a little bit more detailed uh, this is just a, an oval like this is a massive oval shape and then this square or rectangular here two circles for the eyes and this kind of like oval shape as well here for the for the mouth and that's it that's how that's how we read it first um, your setup your setup to work seems amazing uh, thank you so much yeah it's, it's pretty comfortable I I actually yeah I actually in, invested a little bit because I'm, I'm spending I'm spending a lot of time here so if you're not comfortable is yeah it's a pain so I invested on I have this really cool desk uh, you probably seen it in the in the Sears guides website I, I did a whole review of it or not the not a review but like a walkthrough of my workspace and so I can work standing up like I'm right now or if I just get tired I can push it down with a it's an electric desk so it's, it's really cool Kike Moreno, Polisa Craig, um, you should also teach in Spanish. There are many people in Latin America who want to learn. Yeah, absolutely. That, like I said, um, I'm planning to do that later on. Uh, I'm just, to be honest, I'm like super, super pumped right now with the with the course that I just released. Uh, people have been, I mean, it's only been a, a few a few days. Uh, actually, it's closing tomorrow. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll just show you here. Um, but the people that are already in the course have been creating this amazing community and we started like they already started to share things and comment and it's been fantastic so I'm like really excited about it and this is the this is the course that I'm talking about called the extra mile and I'll take you from well all, all the, the details are in here but I'll take you from the fundamentals in module one all the way so this is concept uh, designing character design uh, composition guidelines lighting all that all the way to composition, right? Going through Substance Painter, Marmoset, Set, UV Mapping, Texturing with Polypaint, uh, you know, Sculpting, all that. So everything is in there if, you, if you're keen. Uh, just be, bear in mind that uh, the course is going to call, the enrollment is going to close tomorrow at midnight. And the reason I am doing that as well is so that um, this is not just a course that you just buy and, and go through it. <laughs> uh, it's more kind of like a lifetime membership. And every time that I find, or, or like as soon as I find some like a workflow, something that I think is valuable that I can uh, share, what I'll do is I'll I'll add it to the course, and because you have lifetime access, you will be able to be able to see it. Uh, and the reason I'm I'm closing the enrollment is because I need to keep the number of students relatively low so that I can provide a good um, a good support for for everyone that's involved. Um, so if you cannot make it, I'm just put a I'm gonna put the link in there if you cannot make it this time i will probably open it up um later this year not sure it, it all depends on on the progress that the current the people that are currently in the in the course um are gonna have because uh, again I'm, I'm just gonna be there for them to try to help them push the art uh, their art to to the next level so it depends on 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 how we progress uh but yeah i will open up the course later on this year uh, it's just that if you enroll before this, before the, the this first VIP launch, uh, you will have a bunch of really cool extras, um, extra modules like the art of living as an artist. And I just I interviewed uh, a couple of my friends from the industry. Uh, one of them actually uh, does live uh, live uh, zero live stream. Uh, Miguel Guerrero, you've probably seen him. He's awesome, uh, and uh, and a bunch of other really really awesome artists. Um, they're in there. Uh, plus, I'm 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 sharing some of my some of the things that I think artists don't necessarily talk too much. So some people like share, uh, share the process and, and show you how you work from point A to point B, and and that's really cool. Um, but some some something else that I found to be very like a crucial thing is how to manage the time and how to how to make it work basically, how to make it happen. So this module as well is all about that. I share all my um, you know my priority list, how I manage my time, how I set up priorities, how I control all the projects that I'm working on at the time, um, at the same time. So you will see all that in here, and those are bonuses that you will get if you if you enroll this this time. Um, plus, this is the extra mile community. I think this is my favorite thing by far. Uh, plus, it's the one that I kind of am more involved with. So. Uh, this is the one that I use to to give feedback to people, and and everyone gives feedback to each other. It's really cool. 
And then the third one is just a one-on-one -on -one portfolio re review with me. So we sit down together and, and I'll go through uh, whatever it is that you want to create so that I can maybe point you in the right direction or, or, or give you feedback on, on what needs to be refined and, and what to work on and things like that. So this is just a one-on-one -on -one thing that uh, this is the type of thing that probably won't be available for the next release. Other than that, just, uh, yeah, everything is in the website. So feel free to go ahead and check it out. All right. Um, Going back, sorry, <laughs> I, I didn't answer the question, uh, Kike Moreno. So this whole thing, this whole um, shameless plug of the of the course was because uh, that's what I've that I've been doing for a while now, and it's taking up all my time. And I'm in the middle of the launch, uh, which, like I said, it closes tomorrow. That's why I haven't set up anything else, and that's why kind of like um, the Serious Guides hasn't had any update since a, for a while now, uh, which is something that I will do uh, this week hopefully, uh, and. I'm gonna start doing some Spanish or some some live streams some live live streams in Spanish, uh, hopefully soon, uh, for those who prefer in in Spanish. Hey, Ludwig, how's it going? Uh, one question: one uh, fiber mesh to create or alguno? Uh, this fiber mesh that I just did here, uh, we just created in a couple of seconds. But again, this is just a, a rough idea to see if we're on the right track. Um, in the next stream, we'll do it properly. Uh, we'll create it properly. So if you tune in next time, next Friday, I think we will be able to to work on that. Um, Dafuka-san, Pablo, your new course seems to to be more focused on the final product for those of, of us who are newer and still working on completing a sculpt. How do you feel your course suits this LE user of Zbrush? So the course, um, I, I assume you have a certain level of competence in Zbrush, so like uh, how to move, how to rotate things around, uh, how to zoom in and out, what the interface looks like, you know, like the basic stuff. So if you can, if you are able to open ZBrush and, you know, mock around and I know what the tools are, like the basic tools, like what are the gizmo, you know, control shift to um, to select, uh, control to mask, those sort of things, um, you're good to go because in the, in the module of sculpting, for example, I, there is a there is a lesson where I show um, I, I do a quick overview of the different tools that I'm going to use for the rest of the of the course like um, Dynamesh, uh, Siri Mesha, uh, Sculptris Pro, all of those things. Those are, those are explained in a in a little quick video, and then I will w walk you through every step. Um, I think that that's that's kind of like why why I spent so long so long creating this course because it's been a year really uh, creating and developing the course because. Um, I was kind of like researching and studying what are the actual steps to create a, a systematic approach so that I can give you, all right, so first step is doing that, the second one is doing this, and so on and so forth. Um, so based on that, if you know, if you know, so like, like I said, the very basics of ZBrush, you are in a good shape to, you know, complete, complete the course because um, although it is kind of like intermediate to advance, I do, I do start from the, from the very core principles of the very basics. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure, I don't know if that if that makes it any clear, but if you have a, a very basic level of competence in ZBrush, if you know uh, how to you know fire up and, and know what the interface is, you, you're good to go. Like you can probably um, um, figure it out. And if there's some things that you don't know or, or like you're struggling, that's the whole point of me being there to, to support uh, support you guys on, on the thing. Um, yeah, so hopefully that answers the question. I, I attended a phone call and there is a fiber mesh already. Like I said, the fiber mesh is pretty pretty rough. We'll we'll do it properly next time and, and we groom it and all that. Um, very cool, thanks Ashley. Please send us the course link. I put it at the top. Oh, didn't I? Oh, it didn't work. Anyway, if you go to 3dconceptartist.com that's the that's the website. So 3D 3D artists .com, That's the new. That's my new website. It's like my new little baby. This one right here at the top. So 3D concept artists .com. Um, and the only course that I well currently the website only has one course, which is kind of like the big thing for me right now. My next big project, the extra mile. So if you go to 3D concept artists that 3D concept artists .com, That's what you'll find in there. Um, again, the, all the information is in there. 
that commercial dude, check it out. Check it out. Yeah, so I'll I'll, I'll stop with the shameless plug. But I, I do want to, to share that with you because, again, it's something that I've been working for a long time and I do think it's going to be helpful for uh, a lot of you guys. Um, but, you know, feel free to check it out. <laughs> check it out, check it out. Uh, there is only one one on a one on one review lifetime. Yeah, it's the first one. It's the first one to sort of like get you started and help you with um, refine your your workflow, refine the 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 aim of what you're trying to do for the course. But it's not the only it's not the only um, interaction that we're gonna have. Uh, I'm gonna have regular Q and A's, uh, dedicated live streams like I'm doing here with Serious Guides, but more specifically to to talk about you know the, the different processes and different workflows of the course and obviously it's not just limited to zero we're going to talk about um substance painter key shot everything like that so uh that's that's kind of like why i'm i'm doing it like as in a lifetime because i'm gonna lifetime access because i'm very involved with the project so i'm gonna be part of it as well and and help you in any way that i can uh what are the expectations in a portfolio of a person who's applying for an internship versus applying for a junior post position, thanks. I would say, um, from my experience, I would say that a portfolio for an internship, it's it doesn't have to be as well, as polished as uh, for a junior position. Um, one thing that I, th one thing that I think is very, uh, is, is very, is very impressive for whoever is hiring or whoever is analyzing your portfolio is to have uh, a bit of the process of how you how you come up to with something. So, if let's say using this uh, monkey as a as a reference, if if I were to apply this as part of my portfolio or put it in my in my portfolio and apply uh, with this, I wouldn't just have this this guy as a as a final image. That would be kind of like my my you know like the the full page. If I were to print something, the full page will be this uh, this monkey. But then um, I would also include some screenshots or a little bit of uh, very very small text on on how I approach it because I think that is very important to to showcase how you get to a point or or what is your workflow what is your process to to get a to get to a final polished illustration and the reason I'm saying that it might not be the case uh, this is just my personal experience uh, it it is because the person that is hiring or the person that is you know bringing you on board for an internship. Uh, would look at the final result, and if it, it it might not be the best thing, or it might not be as polished as it could be once you you know get more knowledge and all that. Uh, but it shows that you have the ability to you know absorb knowledge or um, the aptitude to to learn things fast, and that's something that is very important. Um, and it's something that I told uh, some of my students as well. Uh, a lot of people are too concerned about knowing all the all the software that are in the industry, like you know. Oh, I need to know Maya. I need to know Blender. I need to know this. I need to know that. Um, and at the end of the day, it's better to understand some of the concepts first, and then you can jump between software a little bit easier. Plus, in in bigger studios, if you're applying for a big studio, they probably have a proprietary software. Propriet proprietary. I always struggle with that word. Um, but basically, they own the software, so they or it's a it's a it's a it's a version of the software. So you will have to learn that software anyway to fit within their pipeline. Uh, so I wouldn't, I, would, I wouldn't be too concerned with that. So I don't know if that answers your question. Hopefully, hopefully that does, uh, or like give you an idea. All right, guys. So I think, I think that's it. Um, I, I apologize if I know you with the, with the shameless blogs today, but um, it's it's time sensitive. So I do want to make sure that you guys have the opportunity to be part of it. If if you find it, um, if you find that something that might might be useful, so I'm gonna leave this uh, monkey here. <laughs> um, next next stream, we'll do some fiber mesh and you know add some some details and and so on and so forth. So that's it. That's it for me. I'll see you guys next week. Have a good one and happy sea rushing. Cheers, guys. <laughs>